Hey everybody, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, the classic of tea, episode four, four, four. four. It's just episode four, not 444. For those of you that are new and might think we've done 444 episodes, <laughs> not the case. All right, before we dive in and let you know what we're brewing, I'm gonna ask you to let you know what... Let us know let what you're brewing. Let us know what you're brewing. Yes, that's what I meant. Oh, holy hammerhead shark in a glass of lukewarm water. It's tea trivia time shortly. Ooh. Shortly. Everybody's excited for that. Everybody's excited. I'm excited. I got some new style content today. All right. Instagram what are we... do waves, I think. Waving to Instagram. Yeah. T Maple TW. T Maple TW. Yes. Uh, welcome. Let us know what you're brewing. We are brewing, as you may have heard in the intro, a delicious Fen Huang Dance Hong Rogue Xiang. I cannot mm. wait to dive Not into this. Not a rock, Fen Huang Dance Hong, but it's a Rogue right? Xiang. Right, Rogue Xiang. For, yeah, for those of you who are like, what the heck? She's gonna explain. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain much. <laughs> we have a video explaining what's going on. Why is this a rogue xiang is not a rock tea? This is a classic type, one of the ten classic Fen Huang Dan Tong tea. And uh, if you check out that video, it also shows you how to brew this tea. And uh, we also covered a little bit about the history of Fen Huang Dan Tong and legends and stuff. It's a fun video. Yes, so there you go. So check that video to learn more about this tea. I'm, we're gonna share some tasting notes once we get it brewed. For those of oh, you, I didn't know we changed the scene. <laughs> My hand was, I think, was covering. A, oh, don't worry, don't time. worry. Yeah, late mm. night here. Nice. So late night well, on Instagram. Hey, Igor. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Yeah, T Maple, let us know where you're mm -hmm. at on Instagram. And We're I'm gonna... in Ottawa, and it's bright, sunny, Super hot day, hot. afternoon. Very Super hot. hot, midday, afternoon. We can't wait. We're going to the beach after. And uh, let me tell you, for those of you that uh, are used to the intro and you're not new to Sunday Tea Book, we want to know what you're brewing. I'm going to challenge you a little further. I want you to take some pictures. I want, to show, I want you to show me what you're brewing. Jump onto our Discord and uh, post some pictures of what you're brewing. Eric, I understand you're too tired to brew tea right now. No pressure, no pressure. Just relax, rest, enjoy the episode, worry and stress-free. But everybody else, get your cameras out, get some pictures up on the uh, Discord. Only Eric is, dis is allowed to have a break there. Just kidding, just kidding, of course. All right, what is Sunday Tea Book? All right, Sunday Tea Book uh, is, uh, is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or uh, article that is rich in information about Chinese tea and its culture and we either translate it or if it's already translated and the translation's a little bit wobbly we we kind of go over it and and sort out any confusion um, so you might wonder to yourself why do we do that live why do we come on camera to to translate a document why don't you just post that on your website and the reason for that is over the years, working with Jen, understanding, diving into documents, diving into tea, just learning more about Chinese tea, there is so much information that is exchanged in the act of figuring out what is meant, what was meant, that if we just posted the document, you guys would miss out on a lot. We would miss out on a lot too, because you guys can jump in with your questions here as we go through it. You can help us if we're grasp, grasping for a word, we can't figure out the word. So. I just think this is way better. This is way more awesome. Um, this is obviously the way it should have always been done for all of time, but there just wasn't YouTube for all of time. So now we're fixing that, we're doing it right. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is. Um, of course, for you guys on Instagram, you're gonna wanna jump over to YouTube because tea trivia time does not happen on Instagram. It only happens on YouTube. It's super fun. We just have a few questions. We take score yes. and uh, it's not about winning and losing. It's about having fun. So dive over to YouTube for tea trivia time. That is coming up. Like I said, I got some new, new formatting coming up with that. And while you're, um, and uh, if, you're, if you already know that you're gonna love this episode, please smash the thumbs up button right now. If you want to wait, you can wait to the end and see if you like it. Oh boy, is it on the brew cam? Let's go in. Let's go in for a big zoom. We got a we so, got a tea overflow. Tea overflow. We have a video talking about how to choose a teapot. And uh, when I just get into tea, I'm those people who is like, you know what? I look at this teapot. Awesome. I feel like this teapot should brew this tea. This is what what I just do, and this is what I end up with. Super. I have to be super patient and slowly slowly if you think gofu tea is like zen zen moment maybe you enjoy that i don't i <laughs> i was so frustrating a little bit a little bit so 
oolong like uh, for one dental is a straight leaf oolong this is so good and i nowadays i would choose a wider I, hang on hang on these guys are missing up you guys got to oh. jump over to youtube but i'll just do this just for you right. guys Okay, I don't know. have a wire opening okay. to get the leaves in. That would be easier and more like, you know, and user I, friendly. Yeah. But I chose this a little opening and I think, oh, it's a beautiful flat teapot, you know, the flat teapot for right. Feng Huang Dental. And I'm like, uh, yeah. So okay. listen, guys, that is a great video, I have to say, and this is a great illustration of why it's a great video. For those of you who are thinking, hey man, I might want a teapot someday. So check out that video because it, it covers some really practical stuff that you might forget in your super zen state to be practical <laughs> a little bit. Some people are very patient, like, but I am those people, I love to dump my leaves in my teapot at one shot. That's why, you know, you know with this, <laughs> The, the typical really elegant tool that I'm supposed to have a little bit, oftentimes you will see me use the, the butt, bit. the other side, <laughs> Boom, yeah, just yeah. the tea. I think that's very efficient and fast and smooth. Yeah. It doesn't give me headache. I got to take some credit for that because I measured the tea to make sure it was a nice fit into the teapot before the episode with the wrong teapot. And I didn't remeasure. I'm like, ah, oh, they're about the same size. So I had a little, I had some play in there too. All right, so as I was saying, just for that, just for that tidbit of information, I think you can already safely smash that thumbs up button. If you want to support the channel even more, head on over to our website and uh, pick up some, uh, pick up some tea there. Uh, and we publish all the teas for the upcoming episodes. You can check on YouTube to see what teas are coming up for next week and the week after and the week after. We're all the way up to episode 17 on the schedule. Buy yourself a little grab bag of Sunday Tea Book Tea. Brew along with us and share your tasting notes. How fun would that be? I'll tell you how much fun it would be. A lot of fun. <laughs> All right. And finally, today's book. We're diving into a book that you guys have been asking for for a long time. Uh, this is probably one of the most asked for uh, books on Sunday Tea Book. Uh, of all of them, especially from you tea nerds. And it is The Classic of Tea by Lu Yu. So, we're stoked to talk about that. We're up to chapter two, talking about chapter two. Mm. And uh, just a little bit of background about the book. Uh, if you are new here, uh, the classic of tea was written 1200 years ago. So it was written in ancient Chinese, which makes this translation work a little bit extra, meaning translate from ancient Chinese to modern like uh, Chinese, then to English. So, uh, and just, a little bit um, heads up, we're not pro translators. So what we do on the website, you will see is more stick to the ancient text. And uh, uh, it might not make sense. Sometimes the sentence between sentences, there's no nice transitions and stuff. And I try to avoid putting too much of my explanation to the translation. Mm. All that doesn't make sense stuff, needs translation stuff are here. Right here, right now? Yeah. And we use the book, uh, The Classic of Tea Narrative and Commentary by Mr. Wu Jiu as the reference, the very base where we get our uh, information and talks. So a little slightly different than previous seasons, which we dived into specifically translation, word to word translation. Yes. And this book by Mr. Wu Jiu is considered the uh, authoritative book on the classic of tea. Uh, Mr. Wu Jiu is the founding father of modern Chinese tea industry. Actually, if you talk about China tea, this is the name you cannot escape. And this, yes. he devoted almost 10 years of his time uh, to this book, published when he was 90, I think. And uh, it's a well-peer-reviewed book. Uh, you know, many big Chinese tea experts uh, help edit, improving, uh, construct the whole book. Yes. So it is a book that if you ever wanted to un get to know the classic tea, you get to read a little bit more. This is the book you cannot miss. And I yes. don't think there. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know for sure, but I. I haven't seen any English version of this book. Mm. Uh, so. Yes, if you know of a version of Wu Juanong's. The classic of tea narrative and commentary that is translated please let us know in the comments down below we'd be curious we didn't find any and as far as the classic of tea as a 
as a, well, as a Chinese person looking to delve into it, this is the book you would go to. So as obviously a, as a Sunday tea book, looking for a book that's going to serve you the best, this was a clear choice for us, the authority, the authority uh, dive into the classic of tea. Mm. Um, because of course the path from ancient Chinese to modern Chinese is not straight and that's why it's so well peer reviewed and so amazing this work that mm. uh, Wu Chu and I did. With tons of references from mm. the ancient text which is very valuable. Oh boy. All right, we're going to have a tea moment. We're going to have a tea I, moment. Just I before we do that. that uh, oh. I guess I got anxious a little bit also because when I was putting the leaves in the pot because I pre-warmed the pot and it was so aromatic like lovely rosy mm. aro uh, like a floral scent I was really eager to drink it and I had to spend so much time just putting the leaves in. It does have a great balance of that um, again this is a dense home so it has the um, it has a beautiful floral overtone with those mineral rocky rogueish undertones this is just it's the a aroma type of a a drier floral, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's yes. not as overly greasy floral, like over the top, like. Huh? Yes. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> you you're right. You're greasy? right. <laughs> I, I, no, no, no. I wouldn't. Greasy right. sounds a little dirty, but some of the dancehall can be quite booming. Yeah. Quite, um, you know, uh, really overtly floral. This is a subtle. It's alive. We gotta watch our. I gotta watch how I describe certain oolong. Yeah, it's totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Greasy. All right, so final few words before we sign out of Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, a few video links are in the YouTube description down below. Uh, so you, you can check those out to kind of warm up to, the, um, to this series. Uh, head on over to our YouTube Instagram. We're going to sign out here now. We're going to head into the classic of tea uh, pretty soon. And we're going to say bye-bye to Instagram. Bye-bye. Share that up. Perfect. Okay, good enough. Share. Did someone just get murdered? No. No. We, did, we weren't sure, but we're pretty sure no now. Okay. So, <laughs> so again. It wasn't so bad. Come oh, on. and all the videos we've mentioned, which is a couple already, right? Like how to choose and use a guy one. I'm going to put those links down below. So um, stay tuned for that. Uh, that'll be coming out after the, um, you know, once we post the video up on our, and of course, these translations are all on our website. If you want to follow along for chapter two today, that link is down below right now. You can go over there and see the finished translation. Some of the images we showed from last week, we had some technical difficulty. They're up there now, so you can get, have them zoomed in and look at them and, and whatnot. And, uh, I think from here, yeah, I think we're going to go yes. to, uh, we're going to go I'm into sure. uh, oh, time signatures. Happy nobody got murdered. So am I. We're going to head into tea trivia time, guys. Let me push some buttons and we're going to do it. Oh. Click start here. Uh, it gets a little quiet while I do this. So, all right, it is going to be tea trivia time. In, oh, no, no, we got to have our little intro. What everybody, happened? I everybody you made get a ready. Video. Don't worry, don't worry. It is tea. Trivia yeah. time. time. All right, guys, it is tea trivia time indeed. We are going to be starting up in 10 seconds. Tea trivia time is where we just have a few little fun questions to warm up to our this episode and, pre and review previous episodes of Sunday Tea Book. It's not a real contest. There's no winners. We're all winners here. Let's get rolling. All right, you'll recognize this picture from last week. This device was used for what? Was it one, steaming tea, two, melting ore, three, cooking rice, or four, catching rainwater? That device there, you see there's a little furnace underneath. Oh no, I think it says it right in the text. Hopefully you can all read the text. <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, Eric's already submitted his answer. Way to go, Eric. For those of you that are new, you just press the number that you think is the answer and hit enter. That's the easiest way for the computer to catch your answer. You probably, you may want to add your own little commentary. I recommend you do that before or after you enter your answer, preferably after so that the computer doesn't miss out on your answer and you miss your marks. <gasps> All right. So we're tabulating the results here. This device was used for, this is a traditional uh, Tang Dynasty tea processing device for those of you who missed last week. So what do you suppose it was for? Was it one, steaming tea, two, melting ore, three, cooking rice, or there we go. Everybody got it right. We got a sweep. We got a sweep. 
I think it's playing. <laughs> All right, way to go, guys. Let me know if you heard the wind, the wind sound or did I just look like I was crazy there? That's a flux capacitor. It is indeed a flux capacitor used for steaming tea during the Tang Dynasty. This would have been the device that was uh, where they lowered the leaves on a little uh, basket into the steamer and steamed them up to get ready to process them. Okay, question two. Shui Ping, another book by Lu Yu, is a book all about... Is it one, water used for tea preparation? Two, water in general? Three, the unique geography of China? Or four, antiques and their uses. Mm -hmm. Shui Ping. We talked about this in either the uh, primer video or episode one. Lu Yu is actually uh, quite a diverse character. We always think of him as a tea sage and that's pretty much it. Not at all. He was, uh, he was a geographer into antiques and a, and a, and a huge literati, uh, literati of his time. So this is a pretty hard question. All right, Eric goes with two. Get your answers in. We're going to be tabulating the results soon. Shui Ping, another book by Lu Yu, is a book all about is it water used for tea preparation, water in general, the unique geography of China, or antiques and their uses. Answers rolling in. Eric led the way with an early answer. Good job, Eric. Way to lead the pack. And the answer is, oh my god, sweep in the other direction. Whoa. Nice. But good guess, guys. I think you all made a really good guess. You recognize probably Shui is a word for water. Shui Ping was a book all about water for tea preparation. Um, and that's all I know about it. So I'm not going to say much more about it, except that we'll be moving on to question three. But it is interesting to think about how we're so focused on Lu Yu as a tea person when actually he was much broader than that. All right, question three is another uh, picture question. If the anvil shown here is made of mulberry or pagoda tree, the lower half of the stump must be, okay? If the anvil here is made of mulberry or pagoda tree, then the lower half of the stump must be, is it one, slightly convex to allow for easy mobility? Is it two, perfectly level? Is it three, buried in the ground so it's immovable? Or is it four, buried in the ground so it can continue growing? I love your question. Uh, I love your answer. It's just uh, eliminating all the testing skills I have. Like there's no obvious things I can eliminate. Yes, I try to be a little bit, a little bit, make them all somewhat plausible. Every now and then I'll throw in a super goofy one. All right. So if you remember, this one comes directly from last week. We were holding up little sheets of paper to show you our beautiful pictures. Now you see it on the screen, probably rendered super tiny. At any rate, this is an anvil shown here. And when it's made of mulberry, it must be buried in the ground. So it's immovable. Way to go, Eric and Fernanda. You got it. Igor, great guess. Slightly convex. I thought that would be interesting because you could kind of roll it around and maybe hammer on the mold in different ways. That's not the right answer. It is buried in the ground, so it's fully immovable. Great guess, everybody. Awesome. I'm going to switch to T-notes for a minute. Just because this is so good. This has the element of Dan Song, the little, the, I don't know if I can describe it, the mouthfeel of Dan Song that I love, dialed in just right. Back to tea trivia. One ancient Sheng is 600 milliliters. Is it two, 600 grams? Three, 100 liters or four, one liter? Ooh, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. This was covered in, uh, back in episode one or two. It's from chapter one. Um, when we talked a little bit about the ancient units, of course, that's always a topic of great interest because the units uh, in many cases, and maybe in all cases, but at least in many cases, are still in use today. However, they've changed several times. So this is a great question. And not all that important that you know this, but this is the Tang Dynasty. Ancient Sheng is, is it one, 600 milliliters, Two, 600 grams, three, 100 liters, or four, one liter. Answers rolling in now. I see them rolling in. Oh, they're flooding in now. Answers are flooding in. Way to go, folks. The computer will be with you shortly. Oh, great work, everybody. Remember that it was 600 mil, uh, except Fernanda. Great guess, Fernanda. Way to put yourself out there and take a guess anyway. I think that was a great, a great try. Uh, Ancient Sheng was indeed six, about 600 mil. 
and um, you know they didn't have uh, milliliters back then they had local units they would even differ from region to region sometimes super interesting almost a study of its own Oh, you're brewing the heck out of this. It's so good. Really, really dialed in. Thank mm. you, right? Mm. All right, guys, here we go. Question five. A tea made in more than this many hours is a high quality tea. This question comes from Jen's recent video. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check that out. I'll put it in the links down below. Uh, but this, so uh, if you watch that video, this will be so easy for you. A tea made in more than this many hours is a high quality tea. Is it one? The quality of tea cannot be judged by the time needed to make it. Is it two? A tea should be made in a single day. Three, is it 78 hours or four? Is it 200 hours? All right, answers are rolling in. Again, this one comes from Jen's recent video. Is it easy to make tea? I believe that's the title, right? Yeah. Is it easy to make tea? Of course it is. Int. All right. All right, the answers are coming in. I see we got uh, Jesus Estebez, Est Estebanes. I hope I pronounced that right. All right, way to go, guys. Uh, we got three right answers, and way to go, Fernanda, for putting yourself out there. 78 hours was the example used in the video, so that's awesome. And, but the correct answer is indeed one. The quality of tea cannot be judged by the time needed to make it. It's not a great metric for uh, tea quality. Fairly complicated situation, tea quality. As you've learned, if you uh, stick with us and watch our, we've got a great video on uh, how to taste tea. Jen gave me some tips back in the day on how to taste tea. I'll put the link down below. Um, and those tips were a big turning point in my uh, tea tasting journey or tea journey. Eric, way to go with four right answers out of five. Igor and Fernanda, uh, three and two respectively. You guys are all winners in my book. We had a great time, tea trivia time. Uh, a nice little warm up to uh, the classic of tea. And now it is the moment you've all been waiting for, diving you back into uh, chapter two, the classic of tea. I'm back. And I'm back too. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the video? Oh, that's a future idea. Oh, you hear nothing from me. It's okay, they can know. Oh, they can know, okay, okay. That's why I wasn't sure what, if I should say tea trivia town or not, just wait. Oh, anyway, right. some fancy uh, transition as uh, Phil is super keen on those. I love it, improve the production value of the life. Yeah, ever so slightly, <laughs> right? A little bit of recap of uh, last week. We mm. did uh, quickly go through all the tea tools uh, and show you those pictures. We had a mini technical Let's glitch. see if it's working. We'll see if anybody pipes up. Hey, we can't hear you. You should hear us now, hopefully. Uh, let us know if you hear us. That would be handy. But yes, we had a technical glitch. Yeah. And most of the pictures uh, that we draw and stuff are based on the pictures already in the book. Um, I added a few that's based on Louis's destruction, uh, this, uh, description, and I have to say, with something to model it on, it's much easier to draw rather than based on the text and the draw it down. Mm. So uh, if you're interested, those pictures are on the website. Link down below. Mm. And this week, we're going to talk about a little bit about the takeaways from uh, you know chapter two. And last week, we also asked you a question that we haven't answered yet and mm. maybe you have your answer is uh, with all those detailed the tools that Louis described do you think we can duplicate uh, Louis the tea cake in Louis's time perfectly and let us know what you think mm. uh, so let's talk about the basic thing which was in tea trivia as well talk about the unit volume unit length unit and uh, weight unit uh, in the throughout the classic of tea, you will see that a lot, and you will notice in my translation directly. I usually translate that to centimeter, meter, mm. or like a more a metric metric unit. Yeah, for easy understanding, and uh, these uh, ancient metrics we're still using. Dou uh, shen, those are volume. Chi uh, cun are length and uh, jing liang are uh, weight. 
However, these, even though the character is the same, there are always the way to volume and length units throughout dynasties and throughout times, they are different. So uh, if by today's standard, one shen is one leader, but in old times it's not. And uh, so in the translated version on our website, uh, I use what's commonly known in the Tang Dynasty, the unit, like uh, uh, 600 mil rather than nowadays it's like 500 mil right. or 500 uh, gram for a jin. So mm. that's why the measurement when it's uh, changed to centimeters or stuff, it's a little bit different and uh, weird by today's standard. And right. That's the image you find online. Yes. That has the yes. Sorry, I was showing them while you were talking, just some of those right. uh, different... I don't know, I kind of got, I kind of went down this rabbit hole a little bit because you can see through the various dynasties, right? Shou, Zhou, Tang, Song, mm -hmm. uh, Ming, Qing, like the, the little variability in the, uh, this is, this example happens to be the length unit, uh, Chi and various other length units. Yeah, yeah. Now it's a 30, yeah. right? Is it 33 or 30? Uh, about 30 it looks like. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, it even oh that, it doesn't have modern on this one. Oh, it just has the Qing, okay. so it's uh, it's not there. Yeah. And then you have the yeah. old so volume units. Roughly, the earlier it is, the 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 smaller the number is. Right. Like early right. times, the one chi is like twenty eight centimeters. Then they slow slowly become thirty centimeters, thirty three right, right. centimeters. It was the old but manifestation of inflation, I suppose. It is, and of <laughs> oh, course, I was even, just kidding. No, it, it's true. Even in the same dynasty, it's not always consistent. Mm. When the realm was more solid, it's more everything is more straight. When you know the end of a dynasty, where things go wonky, you know all those basic measurements also become inflated mm -hmm. similar to money right yeah so yeah. eric pointed out on this chart it looks like a sheng is one liter and that's right because if you check out this chart carefully you'll see i thought this was interesting because this is volume over time but it's not like dynastic time it's actually 1915 1930 so even in modern pretty modern recent times the the units have been dialed in right mm -hmm. so in the 30s the shen landed on a liter Mm -hmm. um, that's I think that's the modern the modern one, right? Right. And the Tang Dynasty, as we just learned, was six hundred. But even as early as nineteen fifteen, it was actually uh, a little bit more, like really, really little bit. Okay, like mm -hmm. th three mil or something, or thirty yeah. mil. Right. Yeah. Enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an interesting topic that you can really dive into, Oops. and it really reflects the economy of the time and mm. stuff. It's a, it's a really fun fact. It, uh, but just to point out, and if you see different translations, they have different measurements or stuff, that could be the reason. That's it also it. reflects yeah. in the classic of tea how much detail is in there, right? So in terms of, in terms of the, 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 tea, uh, the tea tools that we looked at, the production tools, a lot of them have measurements. They're almost pretty much specced out in terms of uh, their dimensions and sizes. So I thought that was pretty cool. Mm. And second is uh, this whole process I... Uh, we see with all the tools is described as uh, it's a steamed uh, tea cake. Uh, that's what uh, uh, the tea mostly looked like in Louis' time. And it, this form of tea disappeared after later in Tang Dynasty and slowly, slowly fade away. And in modern times, like nowadays, today, do we still see legacy of tea from that time? Yes. Uh, it transformed in general into two types of uh, tea. One is uh, steamed green tea. Uh, and I just want to point out, yes, China produces steamed green mm. tea. It's not popular. It's the, the most famous is Enshi uh, Yulu from Hubei province. Which is shown And uh, I actually saw, uh, saw some, uh, you know, a very official a major tea education certificate facilities textbook says that China produce pan fried tea, Japan produce a steam. That's just straight yeah. up wrong. Yeah, exclusively. Yeah. You said. China has four types of green tea, including steam green tea. And yeah. the other form of this, uh, just let's call that Louis tea cake, just for convenience, becomes the pressed tea cake 
which I think more, many of us are very familiar right. with, like uh, Puar, Puar TK, Shen Puar, Shu Puar, and uh, uh, Dark Tea, Hunan Dark Tea, Hubei Dark Tea, those are all pressed, or even mm. uh, pressed black tea, like Mi Zhuan Cha. So mm. pressed tea is still kept, uh, steamed green tea is still kept. So it kind mm -hmm. of uh, evolved into two streams. Very cool. Mm. I keep oh, take a sip of tea. Oh, thank you. So I don't know if uh, I cleared up Eric's question, but uh, the the Tang Sheng, which was the oh. subject of tea trivia, was indeed six hundred mil. It's the modern Sheng that is uh, has become uh, one liter. Mm. <laughs> the in, the inflationary practice of enlarging units, of course. Uh, from 1200 to now only adding 400 mil is pretty gentle inflation, I might say. <laughs> oh, this is really almost caramelly and thick. I don't know, tea makes me calm, really calm. Mm. Like, just want to sip and not too much water. Mm. A little thing I wanted to point out about the pictures about the mortal and pastel is like I translated it like that, but in the Chinese version is a very clear what we know as a big thing. It's a because mortal uh, and pastel in the kitchen is usually a small thing, but in the that's right in the book it is those like ancient times how people decode the grain like. Get a, rid of the grain shell. Yeah. So the whole person. Yeah, it's a person-sized pestle. And churn. Right. Not pasty kind of move. So that's just something I just want to highlight because in the book they draw two little person beside to you know illustrate the size. It's out of my. I couldn't draw the people. It would have looked too crazy. <laughs> too crazy kindergarten. <laughs> it's already pretty bad. Yeah. I hope you appreciate the illustrations. <laughs> really did my best. But uh, yeah, I know there's room for improvement and that's what's important, right? You got to leave room for improvement. Yeah. And in the book at the later time when they talk about uh, dry the tea cake, they say first layer, the dry one, the second uh, one says fully dry, the partially dry that goes on the first layer close to the fuel, then the more uh, fully dried one goes to the upper level. Mm. The, in Chinese, we call that half or full. It's not a uh, literal translated as right. 100 percent vis-a-vis 50 percent. The full dry, it just means it's properly dried as to the desired state. What right. state is it? It's not very clear. And the same with the half. Uh, in Chinese, it means partial, like how we call wulong tea is ban fa jiao, half if literal translate, half oxidized uh, tea. But to be more specific more proper in English, it's partially oxidized because half, I think, means pretty half yeah, in English. We've talked about that before where the, uh, the Chinese language uses terms like that in, an, in a much less literal way than we would use them in, a, in, a, in at least in English. And I think in most uh, Western languages, if we say half, we probably mean somewhere around 50%. Mm -hmm. If we it, it, you know, or if we say 100% uh, or fully dry, we probably mean somewhere really in the high 90s. Right. Whereas it's not really correct to interpret it that way, right? It's more yeah, means no. somewhat dry or quite dry mm. would be how we would, how you pr probably translate those as somewhat dry or yeah. quite dry. <laughs> right. so, it's, so it's really hard to say what's the percentage. But mm. in modern times, when we press the tea cake, uh, once it pressed and we need to dry the tea cake, that's usually around 15% of water. But that's mm -hmm. modern tea cake when we process that. In Louis' time, they use the full steamed wet leaf mm -hmm. to press mm -hmm. the cake and dry. So it's different process compared to today's cake to tea. So their water content is for sure higher. And mm. nowadays, we in all the process, like finish the tea, we require around five, depends on different tea, they have a different standard, but around 5% ish of water content of finished tea. So, uh, another good tea trivia question. Tea is not 0% water when it's fully dry. 
That's a great tea. I'm taking it's notes, folks. Life. Pay attention. It's coming up later. Sometimes if you ask me and I'm like, I don't know, it's really hard for me to do that. Right, I ask her for questions, but it is tricky. Mm. I'm going to see if I can impress time signature again. <laughs> Next, talk about the, the packing unit weight. When you read the chapter two at the end, when all the teas are finished and we're going to pack it or ship it, he mentioned that in Jiangdong vis-a-vis -vis in uh, Xiazhong, vis-a-vis -vis Xiazhong, two mm. regions, and their packing unit is so widely different. While Jiangdong is like, uh, say, 5 kg vis-a-vis -vis Xiazhong was like 1,000 kg. So why is there the same unit, such a huge difference in the actual weight? We don't know, and Louis didn't ex uh, explain. Mm. So there are a few guesses of why. Uh, first is uh, possible that uh, Jiangdong's tea is more for retail, while Xiaozhong's tea is more wholesale, so it's a bigger quantity as, right. a, uh, as a unit. Or um, it could be Xiaozhong's tea, uh, Jiangdong's tea is for a uh, shorter haul, while the uh, Xiaozhong tea is for longer haul. So bigger packaging uh, for trans Transplant? No. Transportation. Transportation. Yeah. Transportation. And another possibility is about the tea itself. Uh, maybe their plucking standard is different. So uh, the Xiaozhong tea actually is much weightier than the Jiangdong. It's just a possible guessing. Right, those are why. just speculations on, but, yeah. but these, so we showed some units over time which were more like minor inflationary adjustments creeping up or creeping down, usually creeping up. This was different. This is like orders of magnitude, right? Right, different, like yeah. way off. So imagine that's in one era, Tang Dynasty. You travel over here, mm. and suddenly you ask for a blah 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 of tea, and boom, there's a brick on your table, like as big as you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. Do your homework, I guess. Yeah, it's tricky, right? And it's such a huge difference. Really, make us wondering why. Too bad he didn't explain. So as I struggle to find some more tasting notes, I'm just sinking into this tea and I'm remembering some of my basics of uh, tasting tea, which I think I talked about that video already. And that is just to let the, I'm letting the tea sit in my mouth and breathing over it. I'm getting a little hint of tartness on the side of my tongue and just, I'm, I'm more or less just overwhelmed by the overall mouthfeel and flavor and impression of the tea. And I think it's a good point what what he said about the tasting notes being so surprising, it kind of doesn't matter. The more yeah. important thing is to just experience the tea. You may have some words for it, you may not, but it's just important to, uh, I've had to really kind of discipline myself a little bit to, to slow down and enjoy tea. Again, yeah. I've been getting a little too rushed. You can see it's working, yeah, it's it mellowing feels, me out. Yeah, it feels that when I'm doing a live and having tea, and explaining some uh, notes uh, from the book. For me, I feel like it's hard. Mm. <laughs> tea make me mellow and I'm never so good at picking out notes. Just every now and then there's some words in my mind, I just say mm. it. it's just mm. not my forte. Yeah, but this Next. is so good. Mm. <laughs> uh, in the translation, the, almost at the very end of the translation, there's a short a section talking about pronunciation about a word and I translate it in a modern way which is if you uh, look at it it's actually wrong I just translated based on Mandarin but mm -hmm. at this time there's no Mandarin so his uh, pronouncing guide was based on ancient Chinese so just want to point out uh, that translation was for easy understanding but technically it's wrong right uh, yeah yeah, I think that's a, a, safe, uh, a safe departure you took there because we're looking more for the tea-related content and this is yeah. more of the story time signature, more of the linguistic-related content, <laughs> right? Which is yeah. probably very fascinating, but uh, uh, yeah, that, I think that was a good call. Yeah, and the last one in the, in the uh, tool description, he mentioned about a storage box, which also can be used as uh, re-roasting. Um, machine, 
not machine, a reusing, a, 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 re a roasting tool. container. Yeah. Mm. So it really emphasizes how important it is to dry the tea properly and maintain that. Um, a lot of times, because we live in the modern scenario, we have fridge, we have everything, our house is, uh, you know, moderated and stuff. We yeah, forget air conditioned and how heated. old times, uh, how old times people live. When it's wet, it is really wet. Mm. So, like when we go to tea, uh, tea field, uh, I remember Phil was really surprised how some of the farmers' house. I was about to say it's not even ancient times. It, even in modern times, so open, so open, so much more in the environment. The environment is much more pleasant in yeah. general. Although I haven't been there over a winter, which of course we kind of, as Canadian, I say, oh, that's yeah. they don't have winter, but and it's. Which is I just wanted to point that out that we went to a interesting thing is we went to a farmer's house and he was building a new house and he got busy so their house have the roof but lots of windows are not installed or missing some part of the wall yes. so he will he go back to it when it's you know no hurry uh, when he has time so that's how not important to seal mm. the house mm. in the south where the tea is produced and it's really wet the wet that I think if you live in Ontario, you wouldn't understand. No offense, but it's different. Like here when it rains, it's 100% humidity, but it's not humid. You get in the house, your clothes go dry, easy. Mm. So that's why when I first get here, when I saw no Canadian people use umbrella, I was like, why? Later on, I realized because you get dry really easy once you get in on, out of the rain, but mm. in like the tea regions and stuff, it's wet, it's like really wet, 80% humidity. You get wet a little bit for the rest of the day, your clothes stay wet. Yeah. If you put a uh, clothes air dry, it's very normal for us to take like a three days when it's sunny or seven days when it's rainy to dry the clothes. Wow. While in Canada, it's overnight or morning till afternoon, the, the clothes air dry. Yeah, yeah. So, the climate really affects and in old times to make sure tea doesn't get mold without a fridge or all those stuff. It is pretty, it's a, some major thing to consider. Mm. So they pretty much had to re-roast because you, even if the container is sealed, right? It was sealed on a humid day. Mm. There's a certain, and that tea will absorb the humidity. So you're going to open and close that to get your tea for brewing. Every time you do that, you're renewing the humidity. Yeah. A little bit goes in, a little. So you got to re-roast that to get that humidity back out. Yeah. Because you're basically living in the environment. Wow. Yeah. And you probably notice a lot of tools are made with bamboo. Uh, mm. Why is that, that? Because where tea grows is bamboo grows, and mm. bamboo are just weeds that grows insanely. Super and useful weeds. Yes, yeah, super useful, <laughs> but it's super accessible and mm -hmm. super cheap and easy uh, to work with. Very versatile. Um, it even makes food. Mm. <laughs> yeah, everything. So that's why you see a lot of tools, mm. that tea tools made of bamboo. And um, so, do you think it can be perfectly duplicated? Now we know all those Oh, we're coming back to it. From Lu Yu. I don't know if you have So let's review. That. We know the tools. Mm -hmm. We know the dimensions of a lot of the tools. We know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So can we make a Tang Dynasty tea? Can we reproduce that accurately, perfectly, wonderfully? It's a more complicated than tea trivia question. Yeah, this is a this is a real a real brain buster. Throw out your answers if you have an opinion. Do you think right. it's possible? Or? Well, while you think about this, let me add a little something mm -hmm. interesting. I. Uh, when I just started doing this chapter, I mentioned that I really hated this chapter because it's so dry. There's nothing <laughs> there. It's just a tool, description, and stuff. And I was like, really, uh, really didn't enjoy that. Then I realized something is a lot of times I think in Mandarin, but, and everything is foreign for me. The name of the tool, the everything. But I noticed that if I use my native native language like my dialect to say for example zhen, the steamer the mm. steamer thing mm. uh called zhen. i real like in mandarin it sounds just we never say that we never have any like relationship right. with that but if i say that in my uh dialect 
I realized that's just uh, what we all used to always like this rice cooker. Fan Huang Zi. We call that a lot. Like the interesting thing about um, I think Chinese language and stuff, like because uh, Mandarin is really new, but a lot of dialects has a lot of connections with ancient stuff that hasn't been broken. That link hasn't been broken. For right. So the word years. is recognizable. Yes, it's, till like modern times. Now we transferred, a uh, tran transformed all our lifestyle to the modern, the Western right, lifestyle. You right, know? right. But uh, just to say, twenty years ago, we were still in that kind of a, uh, old lifestyle, and a lot of the tools, a lot of the uh, uh, things that we use are still from that time. So I'm wow. really familiar with the sound of uh, the names from the text. I just have to use my dialect to read it. Not Mandarin, so that was something I didn't ex expected, and I found it was pretty uh, interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect of how the how the language was preserved in various dialects. So, yeah. time signature has an interesting insight towards the answer of can we reproduce perfectly a Tang Dynasty tea based on Lu Yu's description. Mm. He says it's almost like the type, like the type of archaeology where they try to replicate ways of building houses or ships or something relatively complicated mm -hmm. uh, based on archaeological finds and historical documents. And it is yeah. like that. I'm gonna. I want to just okay. focus in on the okay. interesting aspect of that, and that is that you have, right? They have some of the information, but what they're they're missing a piece too, right? Which is they've got a little bit of documentation, a little bit of example. But they don't have the craftsmen, do they? Yeah, like if you like a Saladin, Saladin, Saladin porcelain. Saladin porcelain. Yeah, so far we still cannot duplicate that. Right, properly. right. Yeah, oh, we can. That's a big hint. That. That's a big hint. <laughs> that's so, a big hint. Just to review here is um, uh, the answer or the common thought is no, we cannot duplicate that perfectly because. Even though we know the tool, uh, without the people, uh, Eric mentioned about plant. That's a good point because mm -hmm. plants also mm -hmm. mutate, mutate. Uh, but more talking, if just the process itself is still not sufficient, mm -hmm. because for example, we know the steamer is this, but how do we use the steamer? Right. Ste steam tea is very technical. If I just put leave there five minutes, random let it steam, it's come gonna come out without taste or without a good aroma, it would right, taste right. really bad. So steam is, just as an example, it's very technical. How long do we put that mm -hmm, in? Mm -hmm. What's the quantity of leaf? Because that, the more leaf, quicker lower the temperature, right? That affects too. Right. And uh, water temperature, how do you control it? It's mm -hmm. not touched. Uh, next week, we're gonna talk about making in the chapter, which will also be very interesting. Yeah, I think I just want to focus. So making, we're going to get into the making of Tang Dynasty tea, guys. So it's going to be epic. I'm super stoked about that. So, woo, that's all. <laughs> yes. Woo. No, but but back to the uh, right pressing also matters. Yeah. How tight do I press? Do I just uh, use a hand to give it a little shaping, or do I really press it tight? That affect. Uh, you know, later on when we dry, how easy to dry, yeah. how long to dry, every step in terms of uh, the degree of making this uh, tea isn't illustrated or isn't explained in mm. detail that for us to really understand and every little bit of difference will greatly affect the taste of the tea. Mm. So we can take some guess based on some clues, but it's nothing is very uh, clearly to us. So uh, yes, we have people who have been trying to duplicate the Louis T cake, which we actually years ago we carry some of those and right. we boil those. Great, great great effort too. Yeah, great effort, and really fun. It tastes great. But uh, just wanna point out that uh, those are just what we try to duplicate, right. but is it really what right. that filling like? in the blank says with their knowledge of tea making, which mm. was you know mm. it was an expert yeah. opinion, yeah. and come out with something that does look a little bit like foreigners' leather boots. <laughs> They're like, what? Stay tuned. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. Come back next week for why I said that.
All right, so guys, that was, um, I don't want to cut you off, but I no. think we've covered, uh, we've, I think I covered we've covered chapter two, a fascinating chapter covering the, uh, the tea production tools and uh, some of the stuff about units and making and the details uh, of all of that. Fascinating book, The Classic of Tea. Um, I think we're, uh, yeah, we're good. We're, uh, if you guys, if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It was great to see you guys again. I want to take a minute and just express my gratitude for you guys coming out and hanging out with us. We love uh, this moment with you. We love to sip tea with you and chat about this stuff. So thank you so much for uh, coming back, uh, yeah, sharing your ideas and your comments, your questions. Uh, we absolutely love it. So I really want to take a minute and say thanks to you guys who are here right now during the live and to any of you out there watching this after the fact. Thank you for hanging out with us. It's kind of like similar, except we're not actually right here, but we're still, we're still appreciative, super appreciative of whatever we're doing. Um, we have a Discord, guys. Uh, I've been throwing it up. It's, uh, the link to it is down below, and there's the code there if you want to use that cryptic code, but just click the link. It's much easier. You can take pictures of what you're brewing, share with us your tasting notes, ask us questions, random questions you might have about tea. Shoot them up on the Discord. We'll do our best to answer. Just and ask the community. They might throw out some answers and opinions too. Um, so uh, that's there for you guys. And uh, don't forget, we have a sip along every week if you want to grab the tea we're having next week. Uh, it's on the link to the video mm -hmm. and I don't know it again. I gotta start write that down. Whoops a daisy. Uh, but we'll be back next week. And let's one last comment here. He who says there's no tea in death metal has had too much coffee. That's a hundred percent correct. That's a hundred. I'm going to, I'm going to tell them. Yeah. We're going to the Ramstein concert at the end of August. Yay. So there you go. We're still, uh, we're still meddling out here in uh in canada thank you for joining us from all over the world we really appreciated sharing this time with you and we'll be thank back you, next everyone. week for sunday tea book episode five, five the classic of tea and as always keep, keep steeping bye-bye oops we're still here but i'm still saying bye-bye